House Speaker Kevin McCarthy sending lawmakers home for the weekend after Republicans failed to reach a stopgap agreement to avoid a potential government shutdown. Some conference members uh, plan to stay in Washington to work on a solution. Our next guest uh, is one of them. Joining us now, Arkansas Republican uh, Congressman French Hill. What, what does, what would just the, uh, the outline of a deal look like, Congressman, in your view, uh, given the players that, that are involved? And you know uh, most of these um, ladies and gentlemen. Well, Joe, it's good to be with you. Yeah, we're at a real stalemate this week, and it's very, very frustrating to the majority of the House Republican Conference because uh, since the debt ceiling deal was struck where Kevin McCarthy offered a uh, proposal, limit, save, grow, and President Biden negotiated, and we got the first proposed spending cut year over year in decades and reforms, We've been trying to pass the appropriations bills one at a time over the uh, House floor. The Senate got their job done, but we have not gotten our job done here in the House. And that's very frustrating because those bills are written at a spending level lower than the Biden-McCarthy uh, number and have conservative policy proposals in each of them. And yet we can't get our Republican conference on the same page to pass those appropriations bills. That's the most important thing. Second thing, we need to have in our pocket a good, solid, uh, continuing resolution proposal that's supported by 218 Republicans as well. And I think that, Joe, will center on border security. Our phones are lighting up here with the continued uh, lack of security on the border and the immigration crisis that's made every state in our country a border state. We had um, a former House member uh, from, uh, I guess it was Oklahoma, and, and he was willing to single out uh, some of the members in, in the House, of some of that faction, where he just mm -hmm. actually he actually just said they're, they're in it for their own self-aggrandizement. And, and I, I'm wondering whether, I don't know if you'd go that far, but we just saw some, some emails from some of the, the UAW participants and exactly what's going on. Do, do you think that there are parts of that faction which just... They just like to watch the world burn. It never helps Republicans when you shut down the government. It never helps. It always. Uh, and, no. and then you, 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 you read the papers. You give the, you know, you give Hakeem Jeffries and, and other Democrats. They just love this. They just love, they point, they laugh. They, they laugh at poor uh, Speaker McCarthy and the disarray. The, the majority uh, party is unable to govern in the House. Some guys don't, you know, the, the part of that faction seem to relish in this. Yeah, I think there's some people who like being in a permanent minority. There's no doubt about that. When I joined Congress, when John Boehner was speaker, you know, the rule was bring bills to the House floor that have a majority of the majority. Well, we've tried to do that. And we now have the tyranny of the tiny, this handful of people that are blocking the majority of the majority from bringing up conservative policies that are more conservative in both design and price to the Biden-McCarthy debt ceiling deal. And that same majority of a majority wants in their hip pocket a very conservative continuing resolution for four weeks that they believe they can get Senate support on that will help secure our border and yet us, let us finish our appropriations right. bill work. That's right. how to have a conservative win. And we need the majority to... Uh, win the day as we continue these discussions. But they can always claim the high ground that, that what they are really interested in, <clears throat> and, and there's some truth to it. You look at 33 trillion, you look at what's been spent the last yep. couple of years, they, they can always, it will resonate with a lot of people that this is just out of control, drastic measures need to be taken, we're just, we're, we don't want any more spending. We can't do it any other way. We're left with no choice. They can always fall back on that. But I wonder what their real motivation right. is right. sometimes. Because, you know, the perfect, well, can be the, enemy of, the perfect can be the enemy of the good. Right. Well, I mean, Reagan himself said, when you're with me 80% of the time, you're 80% my friend. You're not my 20% enemy. We don't want to eliminate the, the good because we try to seek the perfect. I wish we had $4 trillion of spending cuts this year based on Biden's avalanche of spending that's fueled inflation and his uncontrollable 
uh, border situation. But we've got to be able to get through the House, something that we think can be signed into law. And that's what we're trying to do. We want the most conservative policy out of the House because we know we have to know, go and uh, negotiate with Chuck Schumer's Senate and have something that can get through that Senate and to Joe Biden's desk that's conservative and that's responsible. And that's what we did when we started with the debt ceiling. And that's where we're trying to end up this year with a solid set of spending bills that are not leading to some sort of omnibus that's controlled by Joe Biden and Chuck Schumer. But this uh, minority number of members could end up right there where we don't have the authority to negotiate like we should. And we end up with the priorities of Chuck Schumer, not the priorities of House Republicans.